medical supplies that came from my infusion company um, a few days ago. I haven't had the energy to put it away, but I feel pretty good today and I have the energy, so I'm gonna put it all away. First I check to make sure everything is in here because oftentimes they make mistakes and they send the wrong things or they don't send what they should send. And I've been getting these infusions for two and a half years, almost three years, and I do daily IVs, two to three liters a day, or sometimes continuous when I need it. Right now I'm on about two liters a day. And yeah, I've been on IVs every day for two and a half years. So of course I got my IVs, two boxes full, which is for two weeks. Um, and there are 14 in each box, so for two a day. And of course, one liter for each IV. Drawers here. It's crazy how heavy one of these things are. Like, oh my gosh. One box down, one to go. Box number two. See, as it is, this is why I have to leave stuff in boxes because they, I don't have enough storage to put everything, and that's why my room gets so cluttered. Yeah, that's all I can do. Putting away what I can because I don't like all these boxes in my room. I'm not complaining. I'm so grateful for these infusions. So that's all that fits in the drawer. So I guess I'm just gonna leave the rest in the box. I'm gonna leave this out since it's the one that I'm gonna do later after this IV finishes. And now we're gonna see what is in the supplies box. Okay, so we got a lot of Curlin pump tubing which connects to my IV pump, which is Arnold up there. Arnold is the pump machine that runs the IV fluids. I connect my line to the pump and then the pump is connected to this, which is connected to the IV. So we've got a bunch of these. They look like this. And I have a Hickman line. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a Hickman. It's not exactly a Hickman, but we just refer to it as a Hickman, it's a tunneled line. I've had ports before, um, but I got a Hickman because it's supposedly like less chances of being infected, although this was infected. I got endocarditis, which is a heart infection. I got heart valve disease, almost needed open heart surgery, but thankfully I didn't. So yeah, you can watch that video up here if you haven't seen it already. Hey, Aninha, are you coming to help me? dressing kit for my line that just comes with like the, the bandage I am wearing the clear bandage because I like that better since it doesn't sh it's not as like obvious it doesn't show up as much and then it has like the um, extension tubing and I usually don't wear a safety guard because it just irritates my skin because of my mast cell activation and contact dermatitis but yeah that's what's in here my nurse comes once a week to do this she was here earlier I should have filmed it but I didn't think about it flushes. The heparin is just supposed to prevent blood clots, although I've had a few because I have the blood clotting gene. 
it's just something that I flush in my line every day at the end of the day after I finish with my IV treatments. get more IVs, not just the two boxes full of them, but I have four more in here. Oh. Some batteries for Arnold. He goes through batteries pretty fast. These are the C batteries, the big jumbo ones, and I change the batteries in my pump once a day on average. And this is a lab kit for blood draws. Uh, my nurse drew blood today, and whenever a doctor orders blood work, which is pretty often, she'll draw some blood from my line, so it's good that I don't have to be poked. Although they don't always have all the correct tubings for like the labs, the specific labs my doctor orders. Like um, I'm going to have to go to the lab to get some drawn that they didn't have the correct tubing for. Which is kind of frustrating, but it is what it is. I guess I've been spoiled with having home health and not having to get perked like all the time. So it's good to have a central line in home health. Very grateful for that. We got more extension tubing for my line. Got a bunch of alcohol pads. Usually they send it in a box. I don't know why it's not in a box, but got some alcohol pads, which are necessary. Those there. Got some Kuros caps, which are the little alcohol caps that we put at the end of the line when I'm finished with my treatments. Got a bunch of those, so it's always good to have extra. You gotta keep that locked and covered so it stays sterile. More alcohol pads. And something I don't use, I need to tell them to stop sending me this, but they send me the little safety guard, which is the thing that goes around here. But like I said, I stopped wearing it because it just irritates my skin. Looks like they sent everything. Yay! Another thing I don't really need, but that's okay. has a bunch of IVs, got some more IVs over there, got some supplies in here, heparin and saline, uh, the pump connecting tubing, alcohol pads, batteries, some meds, and then all the IV medication here, IV saline, up the wazoo, and then down there there's some other supplies, and then there there's supplies, there, there's like meds and stuff. But yeah, I'm pretty organized. As organized as I'm gonna get for the day. Okay, so time for a little POTS update. If you saw my last video, you know that I just had an appointment. It's routine. I have an appointment generally once a month with my cardiologist who specializes in POTS at the POTS clinic. And every month I do a number of tests, including echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound on the heart, an EKG, and which is another heart test and some autonomic functioning tests like the tilt table test which is the standard test that diagnoses POTS. I've had POTS for at least seven or eight years diagnosed. I've had it much longer undiagnosed but they do this tilt table test pretty often just to see how my POTS is doing to see if it's progressing, to see if it's getting better, to see if they need to change anything in my treatments. So unfortunately it's something I have to go through pretty often and yes it's really hard. I have fainted and gotten really sick doing the tilt table test so it's not my favorite but you do get used to it to a degree this last appointment went so well i have to share ignore the mess behind me guys <laughs> i'm just it's laundry day so the comforter is not here my bed looks messy so just ignore that in my appointment i did of course the standard test the tilt table test the uh, electrocardiogram and or sorry the ecto echocardiogram and the electrocardiogram my test for the first time in forever came back not normal, but closer to normal than what I usually am. So I'm more stable. I'm actually stable for the first time with my POTS. 
for the first time that I could remember. I don't remember ever being this stable with my pots, like ever since I had pots. I think the only time I was close to this is back in 2017 when I was able to fly to Nevada. I was a little better then, but then after I got to Nevada, the high elevation made my pots worse and I was like fainting and my, heart, my blood pressure and heart rate were extremely high and my heart wouldn't come down below like 200 beats per minute. It was really bad. So I had to move back here, but <clears throat> this is the first time in years that my pots has been this stable. I think it's for a number of reasons, but before I go over that, I just wanna share more about my test results. So my blood pressure, I did another three day blood pressure monitor because I have had critically high blood pressure for a couple years now, actually for several years, but the last year, two years, it's been critically high. It's been stroke level high and my cardiologists have been very concerned. So they have been keeping a very close eye on my blood pressure and I have been through five or six different blood pressure medications beta blockers, ACE inhibitors. I've been on all the blood pressure medications you can imagine and none of them were helping. They were just causing side effects and or not helping. It was just going through one and then the other and the other and my blood pressure was staying high even when I was asleep. It was going close to 200 beats, uh, to, sorry, close to 200 systolic and the diastolic, the bottom number was always over 100. It's still very high, unfortunately. <clears throat> I still have hypertension from hyperpots. Because, my, because I have POTS, I have too much adrenaline in my body and therefore it causes my blood pressure to get really high. I still have very high blood pressure. It's like around 150 over like 90 now. So they're still keeping an eye on it, but it's much, much better. It's not critically high anymore. We're not so worried about me having a stroke. The fact that I'm finally stable after so long, I am just, I'm so grateful to God because I have prayed for this for so long and I've been trying so hard I have been doing all kinds of natural remedies to lower my blood pressure. I've been eating a lot of beets, which is great for blood pressure. A lot of berries and fruit and vegetables in general are good for lowering blood pressure. There's a lot of herbs that lower blood pressure. Even though I was getting really high, I was also getting really low. So it's, it's a fine balance. The fact that I'm finally somewhat stable with my blood pressure and stable with my heart, I just, I am so, so, so grateful. It's just the best, it's the best news. We were all celebrating, everybody in the clinic was, was congratulating me and celebrating for me, which felt so good. And you know, this wouldn't have been able to happen if it wasn't for my IV fluids every day. I am so, so grateful for my IV therapy. They have truly been a lifesaver for my POTS. That's been like the game changer for me. It's the thing that has made the most difference and it's keeping me stable. It took a while, it took a few years, it's almost three years now that I've been on IVs every day, but basically as soon as I started, I, I got better and we saw improvements, so we knew that I was going in the right direction. So to see that I'm finally more stable with my vitals, my heart is pretty good, my electrocardiogram came back pretty normal. I don't have the effusion around my heart anymore, so the fluid around my heart is cleared up and my EKG, I think there were some abnormal T waves, which I usually get. My POTS is stable, and my heart valve disease is stable. So that's excellent news, and I'm just so grateful. I have to count all my blessings, and this is certain, <laughs> sorry, my cat. This is certainly a huge blessing. I hope my blood pressure will stay at least somewhat stable. We're still trying to get it to be lower because it's still very high. I rarely see it below 150, 140, and my home nurse who comes every week has been keeping track of it and it's pretty much always high. So the fact that it's at least not critically high anymore, I'm out of the danger zone, that's a, that's a huge relief. So going in the right direction. Before I had the IV fluids, I was completely wheelchair bound and bed bound. I would only get out of bed to go to the bathroom, but oftentimes have to have the commode right next to my bed. I honestly just felt like a prisoner in my own body which sometimes I still have those days, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still very sick. I'm not out of the woods yet, or not out of the storm yet. Woods is a good place to be, but I'm not out of the storm. It's okay because I'm going in the right direction, so that gives me hope, and that gives me something to, you know, hold on to. The IV fluids help me. We're obviously gonna stick with that indefinitely, but we also think that the aspirin therapy is helping me at least a little bit. And because the aspirin therapy for my mast cell activation is helping with the mast cell, it, it's also helping with POTS in turn because a lot of the mast cell symptoms overlap with POTS symptoms. So when my mast cell is worse, my POTS is worse. So the fact that we're finally getting my mast cell 
a little less flared up. It's still flared, but it's more under control. My oxygen saturations have been pretty good. My stats have been mostly in the 90s. It's only gone to the 80s like once or twice this month. I just wanted to mention about the aspirin therapy. It was basically a last resort or close to a last resort. I guess it was the last resort before chemotherapy drugs for serious mast cell activation. My mast cell activation has not been able to be controlled by any meds or treatments. Zolaire, you know, all the H1 and H2s. I've tried everything over the years and it's just gotten worse and worse. So since I've been so flared up with that, my POTS cardiologist decided to put me on the aspirin because he knows a lot about mast cell activation since it's so common in POTS patients. So I'm really grateful that he thought of that because I was always told that that's for only like the most serious cases. I don't really know why, but ever since I started that in December, I noticed within two days my breathing got better and my SATs were better. I was dropping to like the 80s and like low 80s and even late 70s on oxygen. My breathing was horrible. It was just a nightmare. But ever since aspirin, I have been much better. Like I said, within days my breathing got better. Now don't get me wrong, I still am short of breath. I'm short of breath pretty much every day. I am pulsing, so I'm doing one month on, one month off because I'm on blood thinners as well for my blood clot. I'm on Lovenox shots. So I do like one month on aspirin, one month on Lovenox, and that also helps me, we're hoping will help me to prevent from building, it'll prevent me from building a tolerance to aspirin because I build a tolerance really quickly when it comes to mast cell drugs and mast cell treatments. I don't know what it is. I know, I think it's from my Ehlers-Danlos. Because I have EDS, I tend to just build tolerance to meds really quickly, which is awful. It just, it just makes everything more complicated because when you find a treatment that helps, it works for me for a month and then it stops working and then what's left? Like I've been going through all of the options and I'm running out of options, which is why I'm at aspirin. And to be honest with you, I noticed this month the aspirin has not been as helpful as last the last month I was on it. But I'm not letting that get to me. I'm hoping that it's just this, the changing of seasons maybe. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not building a tolerance to it that quick. But it has been helping and I'm super grateful for that. I think I mentioned, but I'm not taking Dupixent because we decided against it because it does cause some eye problems as a side effect. And I don't want any potential eye, more problems potentially with my eye because I already have so many issues with my eye from Sjogren's that yeah, we we had to say no to the Dupixent. That's okay because aspirin has been working probably better than Dupixent would have. We're hoping that will be more stable as well and then if that stabilizes then my POTS will stabilize even more. We're hoping and most likely since they go so hand in hand so yeah I just wanted to point that out about the aspirin and yeah I just I'm so happy to see improvements for the first time in so long. I suffered for so many years being bed bound. I still have to use my wheelchair on the really hard days when my POTS is really bad and I'm at risk for fainting. I still get dizzy. I still get random drops in my blood pressure will it get, where it will get dangerously low. So the blood pressure swings is a big thing we're still working on. I'm still on bisulprolol, which is a beta blocker. That seems to be the one and only that only one that like doesn't cause too many side effects and that somewhat keeps it under control. So we're gonna stick with that. And of course I have to do a lot of salt so that my blood pressure doesn't get too low and so that my blood volume stays stable because I do have hypovolemia as well as hyperpots. I'm thinking about making a video soon about the different types of pots to explain because there's three different types of pots and you can actually have more than one at the same time. Like I have two different types of pots. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. And yeah, I just wanted to share my update on my pods and its improvements and I hope that I keep going in this direction. I'm going to keep doing yoga, I'm going to keep doing my meditations, and I'm going to keep drinking a lot of beets and eating beets because I know all of that is helping and the berries and the herbs. It's just a lot of, the combination of a lot of good things I think is what is finally getting me to be more stable. So at this point, I'm almost clear for a medical clearance. I, he wants me to be 140 or below to be cleared for surgery. The good news is I think that my ovarian cysts are actually healing because I have not had, I have not had, I can't talk. I have not had as much pain as I usually do. So that's super good news too. I'm just sending a lot of healing love to my womb 
and I have been doing all that I can to try to heal that. I don't know for sure that it's healed. I still have to go to a gynecologist. I think I'm looking for a new one since I switched my plan. I wasn't too crazy about my last one. So I think that I'm gonna look for a new one and hopefully they will confirm what my intuition is telling me, which is my ovarian cysts are healing or at least maybe shrinking because I don't have all of the symptoms that I was having before, like the horrible pain and bloating, the two periods a month and problems with urinating on top of my normal bladder problems. Those have all gotten somewhat better. I still have pain every day and I still have adenomyosis, so I have horrible periods, but I'm back to one period a month, which is amazing. And I'm still on blood thinners. I was thinking it was maybe the blood thinners causing two periods a month, but I'm still on blood thinners, so I guess it wasn't that. Yeah, that's basically where I'm at right now. Um, if I did need a surgery, a laparoscopy to remove any cysts, then I think I'm at the point where I'm getting close to being able to be cleared if I do need surgery, but hopefully I don't. And yeah, that's my update for now. So I guess I'm probably gonna wrap up the video here. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I really appreciate you. Please, please, please give me a like. It would help out my channel. And subscribe if you haven't already to see my chronic illness journey and to see videos about vegan and gluten-free food. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. I love you to pieces. Bye.